Hello YouTube, Joey here from Team Brain Infinity with another video. And this is episode 1 of Becoming a Buddy Fighter. This segment is basically introducing new players to the game, telling them what they'll need, and giving them advice. I don't know how many parts this is going to be, or whatever, because I don't have anything planned out. I'm just going with what comes to my mind. So, a lot of it will also be with you viewers who are accustomed to the game. If you want to give advice or anything I missed, just leave down in the comments down below. Because that would really help me, and that would really help the people in Shin becoming buddy fighters. So yeah, let's start. So let's start with supplies, because supplies are important, and you always need to have them stocked up. Or else things are going to go pretty bad for you. So first of all, this is a deck box. The deck box is a small little box, or big box. Even a box containing boxes. That holds cards for you, essentially your deck, your sideboard... Probably a life counter and some dice. Um, lately what I'm using is Ultra Pro's Pro Tower deck box. It's pretty big. And has a little magnetic clip right here. When I open it up, it has room for your deck. Side deck, etc. It's pretty spacey. You got this, which holds side board. And you got this lower feature that can hold another deck, some dice, extra sleeves, etc. So, yeah. I like this because it allows you to carry your supplies and your deck all together. And it's pretty roomy. And also it keeps everything protected. So it's very nice. As you can see, dice are an important supplies because you use them whenever you're rolling to see who goes first. Maybe if there are situations where you need like dice to do an ability or an effect or whatever. But dice are a pretty important supply, and it's nice to have some. Um, and obviously, every player who is into the game has their own deck, so... Yeah. So you need a deck box to hold your deck. If it's something like this, it can hold your deck, your supplies, which is really nice because it's pretty roomy. And the only issue is it's pretty big, as you can tell. It's hard to hold with just one hand. But that's besides the point. In Buddy Fight, it's a life-based game. So you'll want something to keep track of life, whether it be one of these little score pads or a life counter. Now, things I would not recommend... Oh, here we go. Or one of these life counters. But one of the things I would not recommend for you guys to do is use calculators in Buddy Fight. Because... They're just unorganized half the time. The numbers are too small, so it's not even worth it. And it's just a huge waste of effort bringing a calculator, keeping it safe, etc. Overall, these methods are much more, much more efficient. And Bushiro doesn't even allow calculators at their event. So it's another reason not to get used to a life counter for Buddy Fight. I know a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players use calculators at events, use life counters or the score pads instead. They're more reliable and they're also more suited for it so yeah you want some way of keeping life in a game and the nice thing about life counters the ones made by bush road they can also act as deck dividers like here's my main deck i have a life counter here that way you can play and it divides my sideboard so that's a really nice feature about these life counters since they're thick they're made of a different material and they're aired out a bit due to the fact they need these little counters in them. They provide space. Another supply you're definitely going to need as a player is sleeves, or even as a trader, etc. Because sleeves keep the cards safe. Um, these are Legion sleeves that I got. Pink camo. They're actually pretty good. Um, I recommend these, Hypermat and the Bushy Road Official Sleeves. Let me get an example of them. This is the official Bushy Road Sleeve. They have a design. Um, they can break easily if you shuffle too roughly, but if you shuffle them with enough care, they're definitely good and they last a long time. So, depending on how you treat your cards... 
the quality of the sleeve will matter. It, but if you treat them with enough care and everything, the Bushiro sleeves are quite nice and they can last a while before you need new ones. Although they're a bit more expensive. So are Hypermats. These are probably the cheapest sleeves I have. They're about $5 a pack. Um, this pack of sleeves comes with 50 sleeves, as it says right there. Hypermats come with 80, and I believe the official Bushy Road ones come with like 52-ish. Um, other, other sleeves I would recommend using are probably Ultra Pros because they're sturdy. I just don't like the way they feel, so I don't use them. But they're definitely good sleeves. Also, I don't like the fact that they have the insignia somewhere in there. So sleeves are important. And sleeves do get dirty as they collect dirt and everything while you play and shuffle, etc. So usually to prevent that, you want something like a hyper mat. Or not a hyper mat, a play mat. Something to put your cards on. This is a rolled up. This is still sealed. It's a blank white play mat. I'm probably going to get something drawn on it eventually. But if you want to see an example of a play mat... There you go. This is still wrapped. I usually keep all my playmats wrapped so they don't get dirty. Because if I ever want to trade slash sell them, boom. They're still worth what they were. Like, this is Bushy Road's Darkness Fable Sneak Pre- Or, this isn't the Sneak Preview mat. This is the one you get for getting four boxes, but... Darkness Fable mat. Wrath of the Punisher. It has a life counter there. Deck zone, drop zone. Zones for your monsters, flags, buddies. And a gauge zone. So it pretty much has all your zones that you need. It has a nice design, and... Rubber play mat, good material. Very nice. If you want more examples of play mats, I'll just show you this one. Probably my favorite play mat that I have right now, the Pokemon play mat. Um, I traded for this, but it was pretty nice. Worth it. It's This is the size of a magic mat. These are like Vanguard size. So if you want to see size comparison, this mat is much bigger. It gives you a lot more space, but you don't always need that space. Depending on what you, mat you prefer playing on, uh, if you have space to carry, whatever, you get different ones, but yeah. So that's it for the basic supplies that every player needs. Next up, if you're going to be a player who does a lot of testing, uses a lot of different cards, keeps bulk, etc., you're probably going to want to form a card storage. This is a box. As you can see, it contains many, many, many cards from... You can organize it, or you could just have random bulk all over the place. That's up to you, but you'll want card storage for your bulk, because I don't think you want to just carry random commons around all the time, wasting space, etc. So, yeah. And I would get another example, but it's too far away, and I don't want the phone to move too much. So then after you get all your supplies, you're probably going to want to build a deck of some sort, even if it's just a trial deck. And there, right now in Buddy Fight, there are currently six trial decks. Seventh is being released in January of 2015. The first trial deck is a Dragon World trial deck. The second one is a Danger World trial deck. The third one is a Jackknife trial deck. Second one is Armor Knights. First one, Generic Armor Dragons. Fourth one is Brave Adventure, which is Dungeon World, adventure-based. Then you have trial deck number five, nin onslaught, Ninja's Onslaught, which is... Katana World Ninjas. Um, that's probably the one I'd stay... I would try to avoid that in the first one. As they don't help you build the deck you want completely. But if you intend on building Katana World and you don't have anything to start with, I suppose you could get that. As you get a lot of decent spells in it and you'll just get a Secret Sword, Lethal Formation, and a couple of actual good trial deck cards. Um, and the sixth one is Darkness Dragon World's um, what was it? I can't remember the name of the trial deck, but, yeah. But, yeah, as you see, there are different worlds play in Body Fight as well. So, yeah. You'll want to pick your deck according to your play style and what you think suits you best, as well as not a bad deck, because you don't want to build a deck that just suits you unless you're playing to just play for fun regardless of when or lose. But, yeah. As you can see, all sleeved. Now, the nice thing about this game is the buddy and the flag don't need to be in the same sleeve as the rest of the cards in the deck. So, yeah. And that's probably a bad thing to be doing on the rug because sleeves can get dirty. So, I don't know why I'm doing that. 
Um, if you truly feel the need to protect your cards at like a local card shop or something, because I know at Bush Road events they don't allow this, you could double slave your slaves. Sometimes I'll do it for the slaves made by Bush Road because I don't want them breaking before I go to an event. So I'll put like an extra slave over this. It's a good way of protecting the slaves, but you got to be careful with it. Um, other supplies you could use, if you're, if you're going to collect a collection or a trade, you'll want to get a binder because it holds space for your cards. I suppose this is another form of card storage, but I wouldn't just throw commons and stuff in the binder. These are usually for holding your trades that people will probably want to trade for, and other things like that. And then anything else I can be missing, if you're doing online training, you want a top loader. It's a soft plastic coverage that is a bit bendable, but it's meant to protect the cards from things like water and dirt while going through the mail. I think that's pretty much all the supplies you'll really need. Um, if you're going to get serious into a card game like Buddy Fight, you need to do a lot of studying to see what the good decks are. You want to know what the rulings are, how things work, etc. That way you don't get disqualified or accused of cheating at an event. And also you want to know what you're doing, so you'll want to practice. But the main things you'll want are deck box sleeves oh well well headphones too uh sleeves something to keep your life with and your deck itself and then probably the, the things i would go for next after you get your sequential needs probably a play mat and probably something to carry your bulk and then after that once you get well into a game and you start picking up trades and stuff i would get the binder so yeah, that's it for the first part of becoming a buddy fighter. Let me know if you guys have any tips for new players down in the comment section down below. If I missed anything for supplies or whatnot that you should, that I happen, if there are any supplies or accessories I have happened to miss that players would probably use enough or need to get into a card game, please let me know down in the description below. And sorry for making this sort of a bland video, but this is kind of not the greatest topic to go over just getting into a card game and what supplies you'll need because it seems kind of basic except for those who are actually just getting into card games. So let me know what you guys think. Leave tips down for the new players down below. If there are any supplies or anything you missed, please comment because I don't want to be misinforming or not completely informing players. And... That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy from Team Burning Infinity. Signing out. Peace.